On April 28, 2021, a woman named Amy Carlson was found in a home in Craystone, California. Amy's body was mummified and covered in glitter and in Christmas lights. She was the leader of a cult called Love Has Won, and her death has been shrouded in mystery. So to find out exactly what happened with Amy, we must go back to the beginning of our story. So grab a snack or a hot drink and let's investigate. Before we jump into our story, please don't forget to stab that subscription button as well as slash that notification bell to be alerted every time I post a new true crime story. Amy Carlson was born November 30th, 1975. Her mother is Linda Haythorn and her parents got divorced when she was very young. She was unfortunately passed around, it seems, uh, between the parents until about the age of like 12, where she ended up living with her mother and her stepfather in Texas. Linda later told the Denver Post that Amy made pretty good grades when she was young. She was okay in school when she was younger. She was a good kid. But as she grew into being a teenager, she struggled with substance abuse and made poor choices when it came to men. And fast forward to 2012, she is a married woman with three children, and she is a shift leader at McDonald's. Amy gained access to the internet, and she began speaking with people who were believing in conspiracy theories and people who believed in fringe religions and had very eccentric ideals. And most notably, she met a man who referred to himself as Father God, and he told Amy that he believed that she was Mother God. So on Thanksgiving of 2012, she abruptly got up from a family dinner and just left. She abandoned her family and didn't see them for years after this. And she moved in with Father God in a trailer park in Florida where the two started a YouTube career where they would start uh, doing live streams, doing videos, talking to people about their new religion, their beliefs and sharing their ideals with the community. This is Mother and Father God and the Earth Allies, and we declare peace on Earth equal heart. Peace on Earth! Once other members joined Love Has Won, the group was kicked out of the trailer park because they were disturbing neighbors with drug and alcohol use. Amy and her followers then moved to Craystone, California. When the two began making videos, they appeared as run-of-the-mill, hippie commune type of people. They spoke of enlightenment, but over time it became much darker. The theology of Love Has Won is a combination of Christianity, New Age spiritualism, and conspiracy theories. They believe that Amy, or Mother God, is a divine deity who created the entire universe. Amy believes that she's been reincarnated 534 times. She remembers living her life as Jesus Christ, Marilyn Monroe, JFK, Cleopatra, Joan of Arc, and many other prolific figures. Amy also believes that she remembers being hung on the cross as Jesus Christ. As Marilyn Monroe, but besides that point... You were saying? Yes. I commanded all my atoms to come home back in the light. In order for them to come home back in the light, they had to be fucking whores. Amy also claimed that she was the queen of the lost continent of Lemuria, which is a theoretical continent proposed in 1864 by zoologist Philip Sclater. The continent was proposed to have sunk beneath the Indian Ocean as an explanation for the fossils found in Madagascar and India. The main purpose of Love Has Won is to lead 144,000 people to the fifth dimension and defeat the Cabal, which is essentially the rest of society because Amy claimed that humanity asks for nothing, so we receive nothing. The rest of humanity that does not ascend with Amy will be recycled into the galactic sun. It is also important to know that Amy believed that Donald Trump was her father in a past life and they also supported QAnon beliefs. One of the more controversial aspects of the group, and this is sort of their claim to fame, was that Amy claimed to work with the deceased actor Robin Williams. And of course, Robin Williams died several years ago, but she claims that within 20 minutes of his death, he appeared to her and she works with him as a spirit guide. Amy also performs these spiritual surgeries where she charges her 
followers, $88.88, and she believes that from afar, from a distance, that using her own energy, that she is able to cure others of cancer, of serious injuries that they have sustained. And Amy claims to perform several of these surgeries a day and that it exhausts her spiritually. It exhausts her so much spiritually that she has her new followers perform these surgeries over the phone with her followers and reading from a script telling them exactly what to say to these people who are desperately trying to find help who have some sort of illness. Throughout the years, Father God has changed several times. Whoever Amy is dating at the moment becomes Father God. She also has had several flings with other men who she calls her twin flames or Lucifer. And as we talked about earlier, Amy does have an interesting taste in men. One of her twin flames was arrested for pimping, and the current father god, Jason Castillo, has been arrested several times on sexual assault charges, as well as child neglect and several other charges as well. And while we're talking about Jason Castillo for a moment, he is a very odd person. I would feel very uncomfortable being around him. He's screaming and shouting he clearly has some very severe mental illness and he uses racial slurs he makes fun of members who have left he is a very like violent scary type of person and as we will see more as the story goes on he really i feel made amy's death much more sooner like he didn't do anything to help her and so i really am worried about him in particular because he is a very disturbing individual and i hope that out of all of this he is the main one that gets arrested or charged with something because i feel like he contributed the most to this surrender surrender when you have started from god i fucking hate myself but i love myself and i don't know what to do with it because I won't listen to you, God. I refuse to fucking listen to you. And praise you every fucking day. Because I can't breathe. I'm still in that bond with you, which I have an ankle bone waiting for you. In your right temple. Do you want it? No. Get the fuck over it. Because I got one waiting for the left temple. And it's going to take half your body up. You're going to be a paraplegic. You're only going to have the right usage of your leg and arm if you push me on this. And while we're on this topic of abuse, there are videos out there of Amy locking a child in a closet because they won't stop crying. Amy also is abusive to animals. There's videos of her being mean to a cat that lives in the home. And so I'm not going to show those because they're very upsetting and, you know, because the content that they have to do with children and animals, I just don't really want to show that. But they are available online if you want to see her erratic behaviors. But they are very disturbing and very uncomfortable to watch. But Amy was very abusive to her, not only the children and animals, but also her followers. She would scream at them, uh, those who lived in the group and locally, and also people who just watched her online who couldn't live in the compound. Amy was very abusive and would call them whores and just say all kinds of abusive things to her followers. So this was a very uncomfortable situation to be in and this was very hurtful, it seems, to a lot of people. In August of 2020, the group moved to the island Kaui in Hawaii and were quickly asked to leave because Amy proclaimed that she was the Hawaiian goddess Pele. Locals protested and the police asked them to leave and they took post again in Colorado and also in California. Mom says, hi, I'm Pele, let's go. Pele, the goddess, has been said she would return. Here she is. Okay, everyone? Let that sink in to everyone on this island. Love has one continued to live stream throughout the years, and Amy's behavior has become much more extreme. As the group grew in size, there were many members that lived in the home, as well as those who lived far away. Amy became very aggressive in her live streams, and she progressively looked more ill. You're fucking done. Cabal over! Spiritual ego horse done! If you're not connected to me, you're out. Thank you for your service. On many of the live streams, the group sold colloidal silver, plasma spray, and extremely expensive courses. 
Ex-members of the group frequently speak out against the products and abuse Amy put them through. They comment on the live streams, which infuriates the members. Ex-members of the group have been found in the wilderness, drunk, disoriented, and drugged, and they've been taken by police to local hospitals, and everybody's been okay, but Amy pushes these rules on her followers, saying they cannot get very much sleep at night, she only allows them to sleep about four hours, and all throughout the day they're doing hard labor in her garden and doing all these activities outside in the hot sun, and so they are severely dehydrated and hungry, and it seems as if only a few members don't have to do that hard work. Um, mostly the ones that participate in her live streams seem as if they don't have to do such hard labor, but in the beginning, I believe, is when she has them do this labor to show, like, their devotion to her, and, you know, again, these people have ran away or been dropped off by members of the group in the wilderness so they can just leave because their energies didn't match with the rest of the group. Ex-members, as well as outsiders viewing live streams, also notice Amy deteriorating. On a live stream, the group told the public that Mother God had stage 5 cancer, which does not exist. Stage 4 cancer is the most advanced form, meaning it is close to the time of death and most likely inoperable. The group has received a lot of backlash, especially since they were on Dr. Phil. And unfortunately, you can't show many of these clips because they get taken down due to copyright. But the Dr. Phil episode is really interesting, so I do recommend checking it out. It's mostly them just telling their beliefs and, you know, why they do what they do. So it is very interesting and um, kind of like an easier look into the group if you don't want to watch like several of their live stream videos because they are very like frustrating to watch just like their straight live streams. But many people on Dr. Phil um, have commented saying that Amy started looking very deteriorated by this point. She looked ill and they also correlated with this because Amy was appearing on the live streams less and less and she was mostly staying in bed all day, but she could be heard like screaming from the other room, screaming commands, telling people to get her food, things like that. So many people, um, you know, were worried about Amy and thought that she may have been ill. And I especially felt bad for her family that appeared on the show that were, you know, talking about that they want her to be okay, they want to help her. And after this, Amy just completely deteriorated and they couldn't really do anything to help her because she was too far gone. So I especially felt bad for her family that were trying to help her by exposing her on TV and all it did was make the situation worse because people were outraged that there was this cult and they were talking about ascension, which often means a mass suicide in cult terms. And so I was just, you know, feeling really bad for the family because I do feel like they really wanted to help her and it didn't help her at all. Amy drank alcohol all day and partook in several different drugs as well as colloidal silver. This is what made her skin turn blue in the later photos because colloidal silver is a compound that is filtered through silver and so it is not really great for your body but it's often sold as this health supplement and Amy clearly was not doing well taking this. Then around March 2021, the group would make reports to, you know, their live stream audience and tell people that Amy was no longer responsive, her eyes were rolling in the back of her head, and she was not doing well, and that her ascension would be happening soon. Many people made wellness calls to the police, and they would try to check up on Amy, but nobody was ever at the house. And during this time, Amy and her group, supposedly if she was alive or not, went to Mount Shasta, which is a very spiritual place. Many travelers go there and like to visit. And the group went there on a trip, but were quickly asked to leave because they were being disturbing to other uh, people who are visiting as well. On April 28th in Craystone, a group member named Michael Lamboy, whom Amy believed to be Archangel Michael, arrived home from a trip he was supposedly on. He came home to find Amy's body propped up and covered in Christmas lights and glitter. Her eyes were removed and she was also partially placed in a sleeping bag. And Amy put a lot of trust in Michael because the homes as well as the bank accounts that 
supposedly hundreds of thousands of dollars were in from Amy's surgeries, as well as the classes they offered and the products they sold were all in his name. And he wanted to leave with his two-year-old child and the group would not let him take his child. They didn't want him to call the police. So Michael left, he alerted the police and they were able to come to the home and see exactly what was going on. When investigators arrived, they found Amy's body and arrested seven members that day. There were two children present in the home, Michael's two-year-old and the 13-year-old Amy put in the closet. They also discovered that the Nissan SUV parked in front of the home had the seats laid down, so investigators at this point believe that Amy passed away in California and they brought her body to Colorado. And like I said, in Creestone, there are a lot of religious freedoms. They are able to mostly practice what they want and they are left alone. So I believe that the group thought that if they took Amy's body back and made it into like a shrine, although they took out her eyes, which is really quite disturbing, but they thought that if they took her body back, they could use it as a shrine and they wouldn't have to alert the police. They wouldn't have to tell anyone she died. So... I believe that that's what their thought process was, although they are not really being forthcoming in the investigation at all. After a week in jail, Ryan Kramer and Karen Raymond left free on personal recognizance bonds. Just before that, Kramer gave us a statement we recorded on audio. God is a woman. And that's uh, Amy? That's correct. That Let everyone know. That's all I have to say. God is a woman and this whole planet will know. How did she die? I actually do not have an answer for that. Sincerely, I don't know. The members have been released on bond, but they are being charged with child abuse, false imprisonment, abuse of a corpse, and tampering with deceased remains. The group continues to stick with their beliefs and say that it is what Mother God wanted. She ascended, and it is humanity's fault because of our negative energy. So the group has now fractured and divided into a few different parts. Hope and Aurora have maintained the 5D Disclosure YouTube channel, which is where they've been streaming for years. And they are angry with Michael because he has fractured off and made his own small group and he supposedly took all of Amy's money. They're very frustrated and they on streams have said that Michael stole mom's money. They also call her mom sometimes instead of Mother God and that he stole it and ran away with it and now they don't have anything to live on and they're trying to sell their products and things like that even more but michael has said that amy wanted him to have it or that he didn't take it he said a few different things and michael is now trying to form his own group under amy's name jason has also made his own group and i feel like out of everything his is the most disturbing because of course he is very far gone and he has even made live streams where he is alluding to neglect for amy so he is probably going to get himself into trouble with these statements he's making you hate yourself that much well guess what i'll be back next time you do it i love you thank you that's your pops the other half of jesus jesus Mama Jesus, Papa Jesus. You got it? I was resharing this with the children as it came back to me, you know. Pops was in the dark. All the memory was gone. They stole everything. I had to give it up, of course. I come back. And now it's all coming back. His mother died for that allowance. Thank you, Mother. She passed. Thank you. The 5D Disclosure Group with Hope and Aurora have made statements about ascending and that the group may possibly ascend, which again in cult terms often means a mass suicide. So police have been watching them very carefully as well as many other people have watched their YouTube channel to watch out for clues to see what they're going to do and of course police are trying to prevent anything like that as much as possible but they've also let little things leak out of neglect like i said father god or jason castillo has toted the line with what he said about neglecting amy and the group has as well they've said that they you know they let her uh, do what she wanted because they knew that she had to ascend to 
you know, forgive the world basically of our issues. And so I'm just kind of like waiting to see if they're going to tell on themselves or say anything very incriminating where everybody is going to get in trouble. And of course, there's been no court case due to this because it just happened at the time of me recording this. I'm recording it in June. So right now they're just trying to collect evidence and collect statements from members and family to see exactly what happened and if they can charge the group with you know, neglecting Amy and letting her die. So, you know, I just, I find it very interesting. And although I think Amy wasn't a great person, I think she was also suffering with like some severe mental illness as well as addictions. And, you know, I do feel like she really needed help. And it makes me feel bad in a way um, that she didn't get the help she needed and that she just laid there and suffered until she died because she clearly was feeling terrible. So, you know, as much as, you know, she was a bad person, it's also very sad that somebody just withered away and died because they were too far gone to receive any type of help. What do you all think of this case? Do you think it was neglect or do you think that's what Amy wanted? Do you feel that she succumbed to her alcohol abuse as well as drug abuse and her you know, medications that she made, the colloidal silver, is what eventually did her in. Really interested to know what other people think because this is very controversial right now and it is a very, you know, odd case. And, you know, I feel like when we think about cults, we think about, you know, like the 70s and the 60s, but it still does happen today. So thank you so much guys for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any other cases that you would like me to follow and make a video about, please let me know and I will do that. So thank you so much and I hope you all have a great day and be nice to each other. Bye-bye.